week's lesson actually started in my backyard, where my children and I found this really cool caterpillar. We always like to find out what kind of bug it is, so we looked it up. What type of caterpillar did you find today? It's a copper underleaf, underwing moth. Oh, wow, he's really cool. They are really tickly when they glow on your hand. <laughs> that tickles! That sure is. The copper underwing moth is a species of moth that was first described by Carl von Linnaeus in his 1758 10th edition of Systema Naturale. Wait a minute, I've heard of Carl von Linnaeus. His portrait is in Hyde House in the dining room. Let's head there and find out more. Hi, I'm in the dining room of Hyde House and I have an artwork that's over my shoulder here that I would like to share with you. It is created by Josiah Wedgwood. Now you might have heard of that name before. Wedgwood and Sons is a company, an English pottery manufacturing company, and Wedgwood was a little bit of a scientist himself. He had to experiment and research the different types of materials, and he was able to create this very special type of pottery uh, material and technique. Now the Wedgwood design is most often uh, characterized by its blue and white coloring. Um, it was popular at the time to collect portraits of different prominent people, um, but even people can get it commissioned of a family member. Now Josiah Wedgwood uh, knew the person in this portrait, and the person in the portrait is named Carl von Linnaeus. He was a very prominent biologist and scientist and researcher. What is he best known for? Well, have you ever had to decide the difference between two different types of frogs? Well, he is the person to help organize all the different types of biology that we have in the world that we use even today. So let's learn a little bit more about Carl von Linnaeus. Carl von Linnaeus was an 18th century scientist that lived in Sweden, and he was the creator and founder of botanical and zoological taxonomy. And what does that mean? It's the way we organize all different types of biology. This organization system starts out broad and gets more specified as you go through the organization classification. There are actually five kingdoms in this classification. Procista, fungi, plant, an animal, and the new discovery of archaic bacteria. We're gonna start with one kingdom, the animal kingdom. Everything pictured here is an animal, from the fox to the flatworm. The next grouping is called a phylum, and they basically can be broken down into two groups, invertebrates and vertebrates. Invertebrates do not have a backbone. Vertebrates do. All the animals on this picture are in the same phylum. They have a backbone. Let's get even more specified. Look at the different types of classes of vertebrates. That's gonna include mammals, birds, fish, amphibians, and reptiles. We're looking specifically at reptiles now. All the pictures on here are in the same class reptiles. Now, there are a couple of orders in reptiles, and this includes turtles and tortoises, snakes and lizards, crocodiles and caiman, and tutara. We're looking at all turtles and tortoises on this page. We're getting even more specific. We're looking at certain families of turtles and tortoises, and the one we're looking at are sea turtles. We have two different types of sea turtles here, a loggerhead on the bottom and a leatherback on the top. Now we get to the very specific species. This species of turtle is called the loggerhead sea turtle. Now we have organized our animals and we followed it all the way down to one type of animal. Not only was Carl von Linnaeus a wonderful scientist, but he was also an artist. He would use drawing in his field notebook to organize the different types of plants and animals he found. 
he would make details about the different parts and it helped him make his organization system. We're going to make our own field notebook, but we want our paper to look old and authentic. So you're going to need some paper, tea bags, and some hot water. This project will require adult supervision. On the stove, put some tea bags in a pot of hot water. Rip up some computer paper or any paper you have around your house. Place the paper in the pot and let it boil up for a little bit. I like to shut the pot off and leave the paper in there overnight. The next day I take the paper out and I put it out to dry. If you put it outside, maybe put a rock on it so it doesn't fly away like it did in my backyard. Once your paper is dry, look around your environment, your backyard, if you're on a hike, anywhere outside where you might find some creatures or life. Now, choose what type of things you might want to draw. It can be plants. It could be birds. Maybe you find insects. Pick a category, a kingdom, or a phylum that you find really interesting. Draw as many as you can find and compare the different sizes, shapes, and abilities of all these different types of creatures.